Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Thursday, July the 27th of 2023. Our prayers this evening come from the Iona Abbey Worship Book, A Simple Evening Liturgy. <clears throat> Peace on each one who comes in need. Peace on each one who comes in joy. Peace on each one who offers prayers. Peace on each one who offers song. Peace of the Maker, peace of the Son, peace of the Spirit, the Triune One. Let us pray. O God, for your love for us, warm and brooding, which has brought us to birth and opened our eyes to the wonder and beauty of creation, we give you thanks. For your love for us, wild and freeing, which has awakened us to the energy of creation, to the sap that flows, the blood that pulses, the heart that sings, we give you thanks. For your love for us, compassionate and patient, which has carried us through our pain, wept beside us in our sin, and waited with us in our confusion, we give you thanks. For your love for us, strong and challenging, which has called us to risk for you, asked for the best in us, and shown us how to serve, we give you thanks. O God, we come to celebrate that your Holy Spirit is present deep within us and at the heart of all life. Forgive us when we forget your gift of love made known to us in Jesus and draw us into your presence. Amen. <clears throat> Our scripture reading this evening is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who seek all these things. And indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our reading this evening is from Henry Nouwen's Here and Now, Living in the Spirit. And this evening I'm going to be sharing uh, two different entries in this book. From Worrying to Prayer is the first one. One of the least helpful ways to stop worrying is to try hard not to think about the things we are worrying about. We cannot push away our worries with our minds. When I lay in my bed, worrying about an upcoming meeting, I can't stop my worries by saying to myself, don't think about these things, just fall asleep. Things will work out fine tomorrow. My mind simply answers, how do you know, and is back worrying again. Jesus' advice to set our hearts on God's kingdom is somewhat paradoxical. You might give it the following interpretation. If you want to worry, worry about that which is worth the effort. Worry about larger things than your family, your friends, or tomorrow's meeting. Worry about the things of God, truth, life, and light. As soon, however, as we set our hearts on these things, our minds stop spinning because we enter into communion with the one who is present to us here and now and is there to give us what we most need. 
and so worrying becomes prayer. And our feelings of powerlessness are transformed into a consciousness of being empowered by God's Spirit. Indeed, we cannot prolong our lives by worrying, but we can move far beyond the boundaries of our short lifespan and claim eternal life as God's beloved children. Does that put an end to our worrying? Probably not. As long as we are in our world, full of tensions and pressures, our minds will never be free from worries. But when we keep returning with our hearts and minds to God's embracing love, we will be able to keep smiling at our own worrisome selves and keep our eyes and ears open for the sights and sounds of the kingdom. <clears throat> the second uh, reading I'd like to share from the same book is From Mind to Heart. How do we concretely go about setting our hearts on God's kingdom? When I lay in my bed, not able to fall asleep because of my many worries, when I do my work preoccupied about all the things that can go wrong, when I can't get my mind off concern for a dying friend, what am I supposed to do? Set my heart on the kingdom? Fine, but how does one do this? There are as many answers to this question as there are people with different lifestyles, personalities, and external circumstances. There is not one specific answer that fits everyone's needs, but there are some answers that can offer helpful direction. One simple answer is to move from the mind to the heart by slowly saying a prayer with as much attentiveness as possible. This may sound like offering a crutch to someone who asks you to heal his broken leg. The truth, however, is that a prayer prayed from the heart heals. When you know the Our Father, the Apostles' Creed, the Glory Be to the Father by heart, you have something to start with. You might like to learn by heart the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is My Shepherd, or Paul's words about love to the Corinthians, or St. Francis, Saint Francis' prayer, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. As you lie in your bed, drive your car, wait for the bus, or walk your dog, you can slowly let the words of one of these prayers go through your mind, simply trying to listen with your whole being to what they are saying. You will be con constantly distracted by your worries, but if you keep going back to the words of the prayer, you will gradually discover that your worries become less obsessive and that you really start to enjoy praying. And as the prayer descends from your mind into the center of your being, you will discover its healing power. <clears throat> Let us pray, and throughout the prayer there will be moments of silence. In our prayers, we bring to God someone whom we have met or remembered today and for whom we want to pray. We bring to God someone who is hurting tonight and needs our prayer. We bring to God a troubled situation in our world tonight. We bring to God someone whom we find hard to forgive or trust. We bring ourselves to God that we might grow in generosity of spirit, clarity of mind, and warmth of affection.
O Trinity of love, you have been with us at the world's beginning. Be with us till the world's end. You have been with us at our life shaping. Be with us at our life's end. You have been with us at the sun's rising. Be with us till the day's end. Amen. May the Lord who has been with you throughout this day from the rising of the sun till the closing hours of this day bless you and keep you throughout the night and awaken you to new ways to serve him tomorrow. Amen. Good night.